Hello teachers, learners, and parents. Sir Jeff po, at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaari nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Walang problema dahil welcome ang lahat dito. Para ito sa mga guro, magulang at mga mag-aaral mula sa kinder hanggang grade 12, alternative learning system o ALS, at pati na rin ang special education. At huwag kang mag-alala dahil kahit walang load ay maaari mong ma-access ang mga learning materials. Tama! Libre ito! Ang kailangan mo lamang gawin ay i-on ang iyong data at buksan lamang ang iyong browser at i-type ang commons.deped.gov.ph. Alam na ba ng iyong mga kasamahang guro o mag-aral ang tungkol sa DepEd Commons? I-share mo na ang video na ito upang matuto rin sila kung paano gagamitin ang DepEd Commons sa mabilis at napakadaling paraan. Muli! Ito po si Sir Jeff at kita-kits po tayo sa DepEd Commons. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pamumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. So, ayan. Hello, team online, team Facebook, team YouTube, at kung sino makapanood ito at sa team replay po natin. So, it's a brand new week. So, let's start this Monday, right? So, I am Teacher Tony or Teacher Tony. Actually, I'm a teacher broadcaster for physical science. And now, your online e to light tutor for earth and life science. So, ayan po, ha? So... Our time slot, no, every Monday, magkakatinigan, makakapag-nood uh, tayo. We'll see each other virtually every Monday, 4 o'clock to 4.40 p.m. So, better share and like our post para makita ng mga students ninyo, sa mga teachers po na nanonood, good afternoon. At sa mga estudyante naman natin, para makita ng mga tropa nyo, mga classmates nyo, so they can also learn from our session. Okay? So yeah, so bisitahin niyo lang po DepEd EdTech Unit, uh, DepEd Philippines and DepEd uh, Facebook page. Uh, live din tayo sa YouTube so, uh, via DepEd EdTech Unit and via DepEd TV official YouTube channel. So my name again is Tutor Tony. Di ako sa live pasensya na no. So sorry as a teacher. <laughs> so yeah, so welcome sa ating session. So uh, I'll be teaching with you. I will be discussing with you the Actually, last concept na or last module na natin for Earth and Life Science. So, Earth and Life Science is a core subject, a senior high school core subject. So, ibig sabihin, lahat ng uh, strands natin for senior high school yung nagtitaking ito. So, except for the STEM because they have specialized subjects or specialized science subjects. Ayan, so, 
As mentioned, sa mga nakakapanood na ng uh, mga tutorial natin via e 2 uh, we are using actually the module or the pivot module provided by the Vision 4A Caliber Zone. So for this session, we'll be using Earth and Life Science Quarter 2, Module 30. The title is Interaction and Interdependence. Diba? Ang ganda ng title. So mamaya, sana makapag-interact kayo sa akin. Okay ba yun? Okay, so yun. Are you ready? Tingnan natin shot. Yeah. Ayan. So are you ready? So parang sa, sa classroom lang tayo. So the usual classroom setup, no, virtual nga lang. Pero so si teacher or si tutor may mga requirements. So ready na natin. Ang pen and paper natin. Our learning modules, if you have the copy of the pivot module, or kung wala naman, so you better listen and watch carefully. So, kailangan din natin ng presence ng mind natin, tsaka ng puso, kasi mamaya we'll be discussing about values. So, we're, we're not actually developing your intellect lang dito. So, we're actually developing uh, certain Filipino values. And uh, may I request yung fourth na requirement natin, so mag-comment lang tayo at tsaka mag-react. Ayan, so you can mention the name of your school para makapag-shout out, ma-recognize ma ko kayo later on. Alright? So once again, so it's a Monday, it's a beautiful day, let's start the week right. So we are now on week number seven. Week number seven, the title is Interaction and Interdependence. So for today, ang target natin ay dalawang uh, milks. So number one is identify the biotic factors and abiotic factors. So basically, narinig na to. I think last one na rinig to no grade 7 kayo. So, so grade 7 science subject niya. So we'll just refresh your mind. Ano ba sir to yung biotic factors? Ano ba yung mga abiotic factors? And primarily for our discussion, ang pinaka-target natin is number 2. So we have to categorize biotic potential and environmental resistance that affect population growth. So itong dalawang factors na ito nakaka-apekto sa pag-increase or decrease ng population ng isang ecosystem or ng isang place. Ayan. So, yun ang ano, ha, target natin for this session. Ayan. So, let's get started. So, I hope you are comfort comfortably seated na sa inyong mga kinala, kinaupuan or baka nasa biyahe ka ngayon. So, ingat lang. <laughs> uh, yun. So, sit back, relax, enjoy, and learn from Sir Tu. Ayan. So, I have here the first picture, no? Ayan. So, sabi dyan, so, very famous naman yung quotation na yan or yung phrase na yan. So, no man is an island. So, we cannot actually survive. So, we cannot survive alone. Kahit ikaw yung pinakamayamang tao sa mundo, we have the money to buy everything. Siyempre, kailangan ko rin ng ibang tao or particularly ng ibang living organisms para mabuhay ka. Okay? So, yung two words natin, don't forget, interaction and interdependence. So, we interact. And we depend on other organisms para tayo maka-survive. Alright? So, interaction and interdependence. Okay. So, for today, uh, tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, we will be refreshing your mind about ecological concepts. So, yung first word natin. So, take note. So, we have ecology. So, ecology is the branch of biology that deals with the study of the relationships of interaction and interdependence between living things and non-living things. So, tandaan ha, so hindi lang solely living things. So, we are affected, we depend, we are actually, uh, it's an interplay between living things and non-living things. Kaya nga may environment. So, the area where in living things associate with each other and with their environment is known as the ecosystem. Okay, so, maraming klase actually na ecosystem. So, mamaya, refresh natin ang mga brain cells to dyan. Yeah. So for today, I'm, uh, I'm actually inviting you, you know, to be an ecologist. So mamaya, we'll be using your senses, observe natin, we'll, take, we'll be taking down notes. Mamaya, so mga, may mga different activities tayo that we will surely enjoy. So for today, or for right now, in this particular session, imagine mo na ikaw ay isang ecologist. So you are observing the interplay between the living things and non-living things. So basically, nasa environment. Okay? Ecologists. Yeah. So speaking of ecosystem kanina, sige nga, let's check the chat box. What ecosystems can you see in our figure? So I can see a lot of, wow, students from Novaliches High School, no? So what are the different uh, ecosystems that you can see? 
So we have terrestrial ecosystems and marine ecosystems. So I'm encouraging everyone no, na make uh, make use of our comment section para at least malaman ko na if you're having difficulty or may question kayo sa discussion natin. So yun. What can you see? So we have uh, aquatic ecosystems, so yung mga nasa dagat, nasa oceans, ganyan. Yeah, good afternoon sa ating mga viewers. Of course, an ecosystem also exists on deserts. Kahit sobrang init sa umaga at sobrang lamig sa gabi, there are living organisms that can still survive, striving to survive on that particular ecosystem. Tapos sa third grid natin, we also have uh, yeah, the African savanna. Yeah. And for our last grid, ang mga happy feet, mga penguins natin, no? So we have the polar region. Ayan, may mga nagko-comment na. So, we have desert, grassland, tundra from RTS. Our loyal viewer, Mr. Joseph Conrad Balakalak. Grassland, savanna, ocean, of course, and many others. So, these are just some of the ecosystems na nag -e exist sa ating napakagandang planet Earth. Alright, are you familiar with this? Anong ecosystem? Sir, may ecosystem kaya dyan? Eh, ano lang naman yun eh? Parang... What is that? Can you name the plant, particular plant na nandiyan? Ayan, so let's go waiting for your comment. No? Anong plant kaya yan, sir? Are you familiar? Nakakita na ba kayo ng ganyan? Mancro from J. Zilin Vanessa or Quiza Corneo. So thank you for that. So that is actually a mangrove. Or in Filipino, that is Bakawan. So actually, sa mga local government units natin from all over the places, pwedeng sa probinsya man yan or sa atin, sa Metro Manila, they're actually uh, providing efforts para ma-sustain yung mga mangroves na yan. Why? Because mangrove ecosystems provide shelter, particularly sa mga aquatic uh, organisms natin. So may mga uh, nabubuhay dyan ng mga worms, may mga snails dyan, may mga fish that can provide food sa ating mga locals. And of course, ayan, so that brings us to our first activity, your first task. Ayan, ready na ba kayo? So napakadali lang ito, kayang kaya nito, sobrang ano lang ito, maning mali lang ito para sa lahat. So list down some living things and non-living things shown in the picture. So a while ago, I, I, I flashed a picture of a real mangrove ecosystem. So did you know that there are actually a lot of uh, living organisms living on a mangrove ecosystem? So yeah, so good afternoon sa ating mga viewers. Yeah, mangrove daw. So can you name some living? So okay, start tayo sa mga living organisms that you can see. So obviously, mangrove is a plant, so it is a living organism. What else can you see? Ayan, so see Miss Jaceline says, mangroves, the fishes, ayan, the birds, the snails. Ayan, can you see the snails? They're actually microorganisms then. So do you know the name of this bird? So I think it's a uh, heron. So I can see, or do you see the ayan, uh, type of uh, a crustacean called the hermit crab? Ayan, so may mga fish din tayo. Tapos may mga molas din tayo na naka-attach dun sa pinaka-ugat ng, ano, ng mga mangroves. So, see? So, sa isang simpleng lugar na to, no? So, nag interplay or nag interact ang mga living organisms plus the non-living. So, plus, uh, speaking of non-living, ano yung mga non-living uh, factors kaya dito? So, of course, we have... Ayan. So, may starfish ba? Ayun, there's also starfish. Ano kayong mga non-living or non-living things here for the abiotic factors? So we have, of course, water. It would not exist naman kapag water, kung walang water, no? So mangroves kasi, they rely on water, on the surfaces of water. Ayan. So water, of course, sunlight. Ayan. So there's a certain temperature then, di ba? High tide, low tide, it will affect the temperature and uh, the activities that are happening in the microbe ecosystem. Starfish, fish, sand, very good. Sand or soil. Ayan. So those are the non-living components of our ecosystem. So we have actually a list now. You can see it on our screen. Mushroom. So wala pang mushroom ha? Kasi aquatic ecosystem to ha? <laughs> Walang mushroom dito. All right. For living things, generally we have plants, we have animals, and nakazoom dun sa picture kanina, we have microorganisms. Alright, so for the non-living things, some factors that affects the interplay, of course, we have water, 
air and light. So, yeah. So, very important yung light source or yung sunlight. And as we all know, sunlight is the main source of energy on our planet. So, let's answer quickly lang some of our guide questions. So, good afternoon sa mga bago natin viewers. So, first question says, what is the interaction between living things and non-living things? So, bakit may mga, let's go back to the picture. So, may mga birds na nag-decide na mag-visit dyan, particularly mag-thrive or mabuhay dyan. So, they consider the place their habitat. Say, for example, the birds. Bakit may bird dyan? Of course, ang uh, living organisms mag-survive yan or pupunta yan sa isang habitat kung saan mayroong food source. Alright, so there's number number one factor, may food. Alright? Uh, question number two, how dependent are we on other organisms and the environment? So, tayo tao. Say, for example, actually, when I had my shoot sa Las Piñas, para niya kay um, mangrove something, so may, they are actually preserving the mangroves. So, meron doon mga nakakabilib na mga tao, no? So, they are actually devoting their time in partnership with uh, DENR. So, sila yung napaparami, nakakatumang makita kasi mahilig kasi ako sa plants. So, nakita ko yung mga mangrove seedlings doon. Tapos, eventually, they will plant that para at least talagang mag-grow yung mga mangroves doon. And eventually, mag-boom or mabuhay yung ecosystem. Kasi may part doon sa watershed na yun, medyo polluted na. So, at least, gumagawa ng efforts tayo mga tao, no? Alright, so, how dependent? Uh, first would be, of course... Uh, isa sa mga primary na kailangan natin, uh, oxygen. So, kung walang plants, we don't have oxygen. Right? That's one. So, we'll, take, we'll explore more about uh, the dependency of living at saka li between living things and then between living and non-living later on sa discussion. Okay? Let's proceed. So, for our, for our activity too, so bibilisan lang natin na eh, kasi we have limited time, although I'm sure you will uh, enjoy this. Ayan. So, word hunt. So, lahat naman tayo, bata, matanda, teenager, <laughs> we love looking for or hunting for words. Sige, before ko i-flash yung 10 words na kailangan yung hanapin, what words can you see? Typo, throwback, being student. Ayan, I'm 40 years old, Miss Raquel Abeldera. Interact with the non-living things. So, what words kaya can you see? Dami no, actually, pero I'll be asking you lang to to find 10 words. Ayan. So, sige nga. So, find the words commensalism, community, competition, habitat, mutualism, niche, parasitism, population, predator, and symbiosis. So, in-arrange ko lang siya ng alphabetically. I'm sure narinig nyo yan, nare-recall nyo yan. So, mamaya, i-identify uh, natin sila isa-isa. Alright, what words can you see? Consumers. Ayan. Predator. Alright. Decomposition. Meron mo decomposition. Parang wala. So, pag nag-word hunt tayo, di ba? Paano bang discard nyo? Horizontal, muna, tas vertical, or sometimes diagonal, di ba? So, let's reveal the answers. Ayan. So, for the horizontal part, we have community, population, mutualism, predator, habitat, commensalism, and niche. Okay, tapos meron pa yung dalawa sa uh, vertical. We have competition and symbiosis. So on page 5 of your module, if you have the copy of the uh, pivot module, so you were asked to uh, define, identify the words, no? So we have the clue here. So first two words, we have community and population. Now, I want you to look at the picture. Ayan. So, nakakalito ko ito minsan eh. Nakakalito. Isa sa mga concept na medyo nalilito yung mga sasyante. So, sir, ano pa ang difference kapag community at saka population? Which one is bigger? So, on a smaller scale, population na mas maliit. Kasi when we define population, look at number two. A group of organisms of similar species that live in a characterized territory and they form a population. So, this, so for this picture, we can say a population of what animals can you see? So we have a population of lions, population of wild pigs. Can you see the vultures? Ayan, yung mga scavengers natin. Ayan, we have a population of vulture, a giraffe. So how I wish I can still see a real giraffe, no? <laughs> In the future. Kasi nagsarado mga zoos. Ayan. So we also have a population of termites. Ayan, no? Kita na yan. Yung parang punso dyan or a hill. And many others. So those is called population. 
So kapag sinabi naman natin na naging interact mo sila with each other, so giraffe interacting with other grassland animals like the elephants, like the, the deer, or interaction like kakainin ng lion. Uh, ano bang uh, pagkain dyan usually sa African savanna ng mga lions? Or sa deer, the zebra. So that is a form of interaction. And we call that a community na. Okay? So different types of organisms that interact with one another in a given area we form a community. Okay? So population and then community. Next! Ayan. So we have, okay, birds. All right. So third and fourth word natin is we have a habitat. So kanina na mention ka na, when we say habitat, that is the place where an organism lives. And a niche naman is the role. Anong role yung ginagampanan ng isang particular organism? O di ba? Para sa classroom, ano bang role mo? Mag-aral. May mga president tayo dyan, may mga secretary. But on this particular picture, nakita nyo sa screen, so that is a leaf cutter ant. So nilagay ko yan dyan kasi uh, naisip ko habitat kasi ano nga ba? You can actually see ants anywhere except for aquatic ecosystems, right? So they try kahit saan, kasunok-sunukan, di ba? Nung mundo, mayroong mga langgar. And they are actually the, uh, social animals and they are actually very masasipag. They're very industrious. May teamwork palagi. Diba? So, yeah. So, I hope we get to be inspired by these ants. No? Na kahit ganito yung setup natin, so we still uh, interact with our teachers. Diba? And cooperate. Diba? Sa mga activities na pinapagawa nila sa atin. Fifth word is called symbiosis. So, I want you to focus now on Ayan. So, symbiosis is defined as an interaction between two organisms of various species in which any, at any rate benefits an organism. So, dyan papasok yung tatlong klase. So, we have mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. So, don't worry. Isa-isa natin yung mga ism-ism na yan. So, for this particular ano lang, picture, so I'm sure kilala, naman, kung anong, kilala nyo naman kung anong klase ng fish yan, di ba? So, we have the sea anemone. Sino ba yun sa pelikula? Yun, si Nemo. Ayan. So it's sea clownfish and the sea anemone. So they are actually interacting. So habitat ng clownfish ng sea anemone. And there's a certain protection na pinoprovide yung mga sea anemone sa ating, uh, tawag dito, sa mga clownfish. For the second picture, we have a fungus growing on a tree. Ayan. And the third picture, a parasite. Ayan. So, ayaw natin ng ganyan. Medyo kadidi. <laughs> As in, tabi sa mga nag-snacks while watching this. <laughs> Pero ito kasi nakita natin talaga sa nature. No? So, these are called symbiosis. So, interaction between two different organisms. Sanda na, dalawang magkaibang organisms. Ayan. So, that brings us to the next word, mutualism. So, mutualism, ito yung magandang klase ng relationship. Okay? So, bigayan. So, uh, the organisms benefit from each other. So, ang example ni Sir Tony dito is, of course, the insects, the butterflies, and they interact with the flowers, the plants, the flowering plants. So, they benefit because, alam naman natin, di ba, the, the insects, kapag nag, uh, tumadapos sila sa mga flowers to get nectar, they are also providing pollination para makapag-reproduce yung mga plants. And then, the plants, in turn, give food and oxygen to the organisms. So, handa na, symbiosis. The first type is mutualism. Ito na next. We have commensalism and parasitism. So, kanina, mutualism, dalawa bigayan. So, for commensalism naman, yung isa, parang wala lang. Uh, the, the other organism is not affected at all. Pero yung isa, nagbe-benefit. Okay? So, an example ni Sir Tony dyan is, ayan. So, we have, mahili kasi ako sa plants, ha? pasensya na. <laughs> So, we have ferns na, or other plants na tawag sa mga plants na yun ay epiphytes. So, kung sinabi natin epiphytes, they grow on trees or higher sa mga trunks or sa mga branches ng trees. So, they grow on the trees or that particular plant, pero hindi nila inaapektuhan or at any sense, positive man or negative, wala, wala silang uh, positive or negative na effect dun sa particular organism. So, sila lang yung benefit So, one way, ano lang siya. One-way relationship na isa lang nakikinabang while the other one is unaffected. Next, ito, lagi itong ano, in example. Diba? We have the shark and do you know the name of this fish? Sige nga. 
Do you know the name of this fish? We have the remora. No? So remora, ang nabibenefit dito, of course, the remora. So tatlong benefits. So free ride. So free ride na sila sa mga sharks. Free food kapag kumakain yung shark, may mga tidbits or may mga uh, tiratirang uh, uh, food particles, pwede nalang kainin yun. And of course, free protection. So insured sila. Kumbaga, hindi sila pwedeng lapitan na ibang organisms na pwedeng kumain sa kanila kasi nga sino nga ba ang pwedeng ano dios bang ano uh, gusto ng kumain sa shark di ba so free ride free protection saka free food so san ka pa di ba while the shark is actually unaffected so diyan lang siya cool lang chill lang siya diyan right and ito yung number 8 we have parasitism ito yung ayaw natin na relationship kasi tawag dito yung isa negatively affected Ayan. So, may naapektuhan negatively. So, we have the common examples like the insects, the sucking, uh, blood-sucking insects like mosquitoes. So, there are, we call the organisms the parasites. Diba? And sa second picture naman natin, medyo kadirik nga lang, but they actually exist. So, we have uh, what we call the tapeworms. Isa yun sa mga sakit na mga, mga pigs or mga swines natin. So, parasites, only one organism benefits while the other one is negatively affected. Okay, so pwede maging malnourish yung particular organisms, pwede siya mag-die out eventually, while the other one survives. And kayo, bilang mga sudyante, we don't want you to be, di ba, we don't want you to be parasites. So syempre, kaya nga nag-aaral tayo para at least in the future, we are ready, we can stand in our home. Okay, so yun yung mga values na sinasabi ko. So mag-aaral lang mabuti para at least di ka maging <laughs> parasite in the future, di ka nakadepende sa iba. Tama ba yun? Agree? Ayun. Next, we have the last two words. So predation naman. So familiar na kayo dito. We have the predator and the prey. So we have here in the picture the, the fastest land animal. We have the cheetah. Siyempre, ang favorite kayo ng mga cheetah is yung mga deer or yung mga, yan, mga katakunta ko mong deer, mga kawawang deer sa grassland or sa mga sabana. So you call the cheetah the predator, yung kumakain, and then the prey, of course, is the, the, the antelope or the deer. For our 10th word, ayan, so may mga lobo, wolf, ayan. So, although at first, di ba, if you're familiar sa mga galaw or activities ng mga wolf, ang taktika niyan, uh, teamwork sa pag, uh, pag-hunt ng kanilang prey, teamwork. Pero minsan, kulang yung nakahunt nila, ayan, they tend to have competition. Ibig sabihin, nag-lower down or kumakaunti yung mga resources natin. For that particular, uh, for this particular uh, picture, we have the food source. So, minsan, nagkukulang. Yun. So, depending nga sa population na mga organisms na nagka-tribe sa isang particular ecosystem. Alright. So, shout out po sa mga viewers po natin. So, I hope you are enjoying. So, yung mga words natin, ha? Mutualism, commensalism, parasitism, predation, Competition. All right. So ecosystem, as we have defined earlier, comprise the living and the non-living things. So sana, no, ganito ka payapa <laughs> ang mga ecosystem. So this is actually a portrait lang naman. So artistic representation lang. So imagine mga tiger pa swimming-swimming lang <laughs> with the birds and the uh, chimpanzees, with the snakes on the sides, di ba? Ayan. So we call these living organisms as the biotic factors. So, ang etymology niya, of course, is the word bio, which means living things. So, biotic factors, napakadali lang tandaan. Bio means living things. Ayan. So, their interaction can be used to classify them as the producers, consumers, and decomposers. Mamaya, babalikan natin yan sa particular na activity. So, the opposite of biotic factors, what we call abiotic factors. So, kanina, living, so of course, when we say abiotic factors, these are the non living entities or factors na nakaka-apekto kung paano magta-tribe, tataas ba yung population o bababa ba yung population ng isang particular organism. So yun, so doon na papasok yung interaction at saka interdependence. Right? Ayan. So sige nga, patingin nga ng mga like signs kung nakikinig pa rin or you're enjoying our presentation and our activities. Ayan. So sige from the next activity. Ayan, so hindi ko na yan babasahin, ha? <laughs> Mga senior high school na kayo. So I just want you to classify whether uh, the particular organism or entity belongs to the biotic factors or abiotic factors. Ayan, so medyo bilisan lang natin ng kaunti because of our time. Ayan, so reveal na natin. So madaling-madali lang yan para sa inyo. So you just have to check 
for biotic factors, we have, of course, tree, dog, bacteria, cow, grass, flower, farmer, fish, at saka chicken. We also have, uh, for abiotic factors, we have temperature, uh, water, the pH of the soil. So, minsan kasi ang soil, basic yan or acidic. So, ayaw natin basic, ayaw natin acidic. Neutral dapat yung soil or yung pH yung soil para mag-grow uh, uh, mag ng tama yung mga plants. So, see, mahilig talaga ako sa plants. <laughs> Wind, carbon dioxide, salinity. So, when we say salinity, yung amount ng uh, salt, yung salt content, content or percentage yung salt sa isang particular body of water. So, we have also oxygen and salinity. So, madaling-madali lang, biotic and abiotic factors. Uh, part of your page 7 activity as well in your module, you were asked to uh, group yung mga biotic factors natin kanina that you can see here. Ayan. So, sila ba ay producer, consumer, at saka decomposer. So, pag sinabi natin producer, ito yung mga may kakayahang gumawa ng sariling pagkain via photosynthesis. And obviously, they are the plants. Consumers naman, just like us humans, we depend on pwedeng sa animals or sa plants, dun tayo kumukuha ng food. Kapag decomposers naman, these are the organisms na nag-decompose. Okay, they're the natural decomposers sa ating environment. So, let's reveal the answers. And of course, uh, producers natin, ayan, the tree, the grass, and the flower. Consumers, the animals, and the human. And for decomposers, we have bacteria. Ayan, so let's now proceed with our main discussion. Ayan. So, isa rin sa mga favorite ko, or actually, not so favorite naman. Favorite ng anak ko. <laughs> Elephants. Ayan. So, biotic potential and environmental resistance. So, remember class, these are the two factors that affect the population growth. So, yung nakaka-apekto sa pagtaas or sa pagbaba ng particular na population ng isang organism sa isang ecosystem. So, ano ba sir yung biotic potential? So, pag sinabi natin potential, kakayahan, ability. So, biotic Ibig sabihin niyan, take a look at the first picture. Ayan. So, they were able to reproduce the male and the female elephant. Diba? So, that's their biotic potential. So, hanggang ganyan. Mamaya sa mga activities natin, we'll observe kung mataas ba ang biotic potential ng ibang organisms compared sa ibang organisms. And for environmental resistance, just to give you a clue, ayan. Yung nangyayari, uh, nakakalungkot na nangyayari sa mga elephants natin. Sometimes because of drought, diba? Or minsan, Ang uh, nabasa ko sa news or, uh, recently, no, may, may bacteria sa nag-boom yung mga, yung mga bacteria sa water, water source na ininuman ng mga elephants. That, that's why they, some of them are dying. So, naapektuhan yung kanilang system. So, anyway, when we say biotic potential, ayan. So, ayan. Example ko dyan. Mga daga. Mga mouse natin. Mga rats. Ayan. So, when we say biotic, biotic potential, this is the rate at which life forms reproduce when they have the perfect conditions. Sandaan ha? Perfect conditions that would advance effective generation. Ibig sabihin nga, nakakapag-reproduce sila, nakakapag-parali sila na lang. Hindi sila mawipe out sa earth. Okay? So, ito yung mga factors or yung sinasabi natin na perfect conditions. So, uh, you can take a screenshot of this or take note of this. First is adequate food and water supply. So these are the basic sources, di ba? Food and water, basta may pagkain, basta may tubig, mabubuhay ang isang organism. Next factor, no diseases. So kapag no diseases, of course, ang biotic potential nyan mataas. Kasi nga, they can survive in a particular uh, ecosystem, uh, kahit anong klaseng environment, for as long as they have no disease. And, yeah, speaking of that, the third factor is suitable habitat. So, maganda yung environment nila. Provided ang mga resources, may balance between the predators and the prey. Yeah, and that brings us to the last factor, no predators. So, minsan, uh, minsan masama din. Kasi pag nawala na may mga predators, it's like yung mga problema natin sa, sa farm natin sa Philippines. Minsan, di ba, kinahatay or inahunt yung mga, mga snakes. So, when nag-slow nag, nag down or nag-slow down yung population ng mga, ng mga snakes natin, dumami yung mga, mga rats. Eh, yung mga rats na yan, wala namang habit yan, kundi kumain at magparami. <laughs> Ganun sila kabilis magparami. So, yun ang isang mga nagiging uh, disadvantage nga lang. So, that, dapat talaga, there's a balance, di ba? Alright, so another trivia. Ayan, so, insects. Ayan. So, most insects, they can reproduce very quickly within a short period of time. So, isa-isa nga nakakaan, yung female na insect, dami niyan, thousands, uh, hundreds kagad yan. 
ang pwedeng mag-survive. So, depende pa rin sa environment. Right? And next, my example would be the sea turtle, as you can see in the picture. Ayan. So, I also love sea turtles, no? So, ayan. Ang nakakalungkot lang dito, so, the female sea turtles, they will lay eggs madami. Kaso, alam nyo ba na isa or dalawa lang dyan na mabubuhay. So, ganun ka, ka drastic yung ano, ah, uh, yung life cycle ng mga sea turtles. Although they they uh, they lay eggs, mga female eggs, once nakapag-mate yan, nakapag-reproduce uh, yan, annually naman or semi, uh, every other year, nag-lay sila ng eggs. Kaso, lahat, di lahat ng sea turtles na yan ay mabubuhay. Yung iba, mag-drown or kakainan na ibang animals in the ocean. And all. So, let's proceed now. The following factors determine the biotic potential. So, tandaan po, screenshot nyo na to or... Uh, take down yun na. Numbers of offspring per reproduction. So, gano'n makadami sa isang anakan? Pangalawa, chances of survival. Magandang klase ba? Magandang breed ba na produce from a particular generation? Kaya ba mag-survive? Pangatlo, age of reproduction. So, maaga pa lang nakapag-reproduce na. Mag-advantage yun. Or minsan, hihintay pa ng 10 years to uh, 20 years bago makapag-reproduce. It also affects the population. Age at which propagation starts, and the final factor is how frequently every individual replicates. Ayon, so gan makadalas, de ba? So it also affects the the growth of the population of particular organism. Yan, ayan. So I just uh, as enchan na wala tayo sa mga next snacks yan. So nalala ko lang commercial no dante. So may commercial kasi dante yung isang brand ng pesticide. So, they made use of uh, graphics, yung ganyan. So, pinapatugtog yung kanta na I will survive, di ba? I will survive, I will survive. Ayan. So, ang mga ipis kasi, isa sa mga mag-wipe out na yung mga living organisms and all, isa, ang ipis mag-survive. Ganon katindi ang biotic potential ng mga ipis. So, siguro doon nakuha yung idea ng ano, yung commercial na I will survive. Pero at the end of the commercial, say, syempre, ipis, insecto, pest yan, sa isang spray ng pesticide, patay. So, yun. <laughs> But we don't want to rely naman ng pesticides. Diba? So, ganun lang. May mga organisms na talaga na mataas ang biotic potential. Specifically, yun nga, mga insects. Diba? And for our next activity, activity 4, so pinapakita lang dito na ano, uh, gano'n ba karami mag-reproduce ang isang particular organism. So, for us humans, ayan. So, we have a viewer from Lanao del Norte. Hello po sa inyo. So, we are discussing grade 11 or grade 12 birth and life science po. Ayan. So, balik po tayo sa presentation. So, we have, ayan. So, humans reproduce. Ayan. So, as you can see, one, ano lang yan, one offspring or yung pinaka-anak. And can you count how many piglets? Ayan. So, we have eight and we have two kittens. So, on your uh, activity five of page nine of your module, so, you were asked, how many offspring does each organism have? So, nasagot na natin kanina. So, one. 8 and 2. Second question, ito. So, medyo trivial lang to, no? Part. At what age does each organism reproduce? So, factor kasi yun, di ba? Na-mention na natin kanina. So, at what age kaya mag-reproduce na isang particular na organism? So, for humans, kung na-reach na yung puberty stage or sexually mature na, kaya na mag-produce ng egg cell at saka ng sperm cell, ng male or female, they can actually reproduce na. For pigs, as early as 5 months, pwede na yan. So, they can feel in estrus na or in heat na sila. Pwede na sila makipag-make and reproduce. For cats naman, di ba? Ang daming cats. <laughs> Kahit ano, iligaw mo, babalik at babalik. And cats kasi, mga katalinong organisms yan. Believe me. They are one of the most intelligent animals. Kayang-kayang dumiskarte, kayang-kayang mabuhay. And for as early as 6 months, they can reproduce na. So, ganun din kataas ang biotic potential ng mga cats. So, no wonder, ang dami-daming cats everywhere. So, number three, what will happen if living things fail to reproduce? Of course, they will become extinct. Diba? And then, for number four, how can a population grow for as long as nami-meet lahat ng mga factors, beneficial factors? Yung sinasabi natin kanina na perfect conditions. Yung kanina, diba? Na-mention natin. Basta na-meet lahat ng perfect conditions, magbuboom at magbuboom, mag-grow ang population natin. So, how can predators affect the population growth? I actually answered that one earlier. So, the number of predators affect the growth of a population. Kapag maraming predators, maging lesser than prey. So, kailangan lang talaga may balance. So, bibilisan lang natin ha. So, how does disease affect population growth? 
Yeah. And then the last question, what factors control the increase of population? So along the discussion kanina, you can uh, actually answer that one. So nilagay ko lang dyan yung starting statement ninyo. But based on your recent hour discussion, kayang-kaya nyo na yung sagutan. Let's now proceed. Kanina, ang first factor natin is uh, biotic potential. So ito naman yung opposite, environmental resistance. So these are the factors that can limit. So nililimatahan yung pag-grow ng isang particular population. So yeah, let's say for example, ayan, you can see in the picture, we have drought. Diba? So mas lesser on plants. Tapos recently, ang nangyari sa Australia, nagkaroon ng bushfire or forest fire, uh, dumaba ang population ng mga koalas. So yan, so to the rescue ng ating mga ecologists, mga environmentalists, para i-shelter sila. And of course, if, uh, on my third uh, picture, we have the coronavirus, diba? that affects every individuals, including you and me. Yeah, so dinosaurs all, were also affected. So there's a particular environmental resistance. No nagkaroon ng impact yung meteorite, uh, there was a drastic change sa ating environment, sa ating atmosphere. Ang unang namatay dyan, of course, since hindi na nakakapasok or nakapag-penetrate yung sunlight sa earth, namatay yung mga producers, yung mga plants natin. Kasi yung mga kumakain sa producers, they're eventually, uh, they get sick, they die eventually. Ayan, so it's a chain reaction. So, namatay na rin yung ibang animals and all. Hanggang sa ma-extinct na yung ibang animals. Although, some of them survive. For our, ano naman, real-life scenario, ayan. So, meron tayong food supply, uh, food scarcity, di ba? Tsaka water shortage. Recently, yung last year, last part, or last quarter ng taon, we experienced water shortage kasi nga, tag-tuyot, El Nino, di ba? So, yung mga dams natin na tuyot and all, and we are all affected. Sa animals naman, recently, hanggang sa ngayon, ah, naramdam natin yung effect, uh, effect ng African swine flu. And sa mga plants, ayan, plants can also be affected by certain diseases. And of course, ayan, so on this particular comic strips or illustration, uh, nakulong tayo, kumbaga parang nabox tayo ng coronavirus. But still, diba, sabi nga natin, Pilipino tayo, coronavirus lang yan, we still have to make ways or find ways para makapag-survive. Just like what we're doing right now. No? So that's part of your survival instinct na makapag-survive, mairaos yung school year na to. Di ba? So tama yung ginagawa mo tuloy mo. And for our last word, I think, so we have carrying capacity. Ayan. So as you can see, ayan po, no? So meron tayong dalawang bowl or fish bowl. Ayan, so on the first picture, na-reach niya na yung carrying capacity niya. May tinatawag na tayo na overshoot. Ibig sabihin, hindi na kaya i-sustain ng fishbowl na to yung sobrang daming population ng mga goldfishes. Compared sa ating fishbowl na nasa right side, ayan, nakakangiti pa yung dalawang goldfish while the other one is nag-worn sa nangyayari sa kabilang fishbowl. Ayan, so that's what we call carrying capacity. Okay, carrying capacity. Carry pa ba ng particular population or carry pa ba ng particular ecosystem na i-handle or uh, i-capacitate yung mga organisms, kaya pa bang mabuhay in that particular place provided yung mga perfect na tinatawag natin ng mga conditions. Kaya food supply, water supply. You know. Ayan. So basically, biotic potential of organisms make, makes the population increase. So, pataas. Kapag mataas ang biotic potential or tendency, tataas ang population. On the opposite, environmental resistance limits the population on growing density. So, negative. Positive, biotic potential, tataas. Environmental resistance naman, negative. So, bababa ang population. For the last activity, ayan. So, we have, sabihin nyo lang kung biotic potential or environmental resistance. So, number one, obviously, that is... You can comment down your answers ha, sa ating live stream. So number one is biotic. So nakakapag-reproduce. Ito. For number two naman, there's predation. So environmental resistance. So nalilimit yung population natin. Number three natin, ayan. So because of certain factors, drought, pero uh, well, limited ang food source ng kawawang karabaw na to or ng cattle na ito. So that is an environmental resistance. Number four, sige, hintayin ko yung mga chat ninyo for your answers. Number four, ayan, so there's competition, environmental resistance, nalilimit ang growth ng particular organism. And then finally, 
we have here a uh, lion tsaka mga cubs so that is a biotic potential for the last activity ayan so parang ganun lang basically din no so kayang-kaya niyo lang sagutan ang ating page 11 ng inyong activity very easy uh, you were just asked to what are the abiotic list down what are the abiotic factors in the illustration Pangalawa is, what are the biotic factors in the illustration? And then, finally, ito yung ano, kung kayang-kaya nyo ng sagutan. Sige nga, identify the environmental resistance that may affect the population and ecosystem. So, yan dyan yung food supply, temperature, and all. Lahat na ng factors na nag-interplay that happening on a particular ecosystem. Ayan. So, medyo overtime na pala tayo. <laughs> Ayan, so screenshot nyo nga to. So I'm requesting uh, everyone to uh, make a screenshot of this kung kaya ng device ninyo or take down nyo lang yung notes for this. So why do you think, ayan, so during the 1900s, there were 1.6 billion lang sa Earth. Ngayon, according to worldometers.com, meron tayong 7.8 billion. So ganun na kadami ang population. So sa tingin niyo, ayan no, carry pa ba ng planet Earth natin with the given resources? Kaya pa ba ay provide yung perfect condition? So ang tanong ko diyan is, you can send the answers sa akin. Sige, pwedeng i-PM. <laughs> I-PM sa akin Facebook Messenger. So why do you think the population continues to grow? Is there a limit? So nalilimit ba yung population na tao? And paano siya nakakaapekto? Diba? Sa ating buong ecosystem. Kasi yung Earth natin is an, an, a huge ecosystem. Okay? So, screenshot. Send to me your answers. Has para next week, ma-shoutout ko kayo. So, thank you sa mga nag-respond sa atin. We have a lot of viewers. Thank you very much. I hope you learned from our uh, short but very meaningful discussion about interdependence and interaction. Okay? So, if you have any more questions, you can send me a PM. Ayan. So, yun ang Facebook account ko. Antonio that may pa and you can also visit my YouTube channel Mr. Voice Educator PH. Yeah, so kita kits ulit next week. This is Teacher Tony saying bye. Ingat lagi. I hope you enjoyed and learned. Thank you very much. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating Itulay Tutorial Session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating e life free online tutorial session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating e life tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating e online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito.
Ayan, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Once again, I am Tutor Kat. Para sa subject na Media and Information Literacy, binabati ko po lahat ng nanonood sa ating itulay online tutorial. Hello po, kindly type in the comment section po ang inyong eskwelahan para po ma-shoutout natin later. Okay? Handa na ba kayo? Let's begin. Ayan. I-share niyo na ang ating live sa mga kakilala niyo mga senior high school student na may subject na MI. Okay? So, ayan. So, we are now on week 7 uh, with the topic, Producing Multimedia Content. Okay, so ang ating module po, once again, I downloaded mula sa Deped Commons, uh, gawa ng Region 4A, Calabarzon. Okay, very exciting yung topic natin kasi it's all about producing multimedia content. And I know most of you, most of the students nowadays, produce multimedia content. Tama ba? Okay, patype na ng me sa ating comment section if you have at least once created a multimedia content or a video clips and etc. Okay? Hello, uh, magandang hapon. Ani Basing, watching from Namaran Agro Industrial National High School. Ayan, magandang hapon. Sir Ricardo, or oh, Ricardo, magandang hapon. Magandang hapon din, Dennis. Okay, so let us start. So, ano nga bang ating MELC for today? Most Essential Learning Competency. Okay, so today we're going to analyze how the different dimensions are formally and informally produced, organized, and disseminated. Ayan. Ayan, nakapag-try daw gumawa ng isang multimedia content si Dennis. Ayan. So, meron tayong tatlong objectives for today. Ang ating unang objectives... We're going to discuss the stages of creating multimedia content. So, ang paggawa ng multimedia content ay merong prosesong, prosesong pinagdadaanan, okay? So, which is later, di-discuss ko po. Number two, identify the factors considered in content creation, okay? So, ano nga ba yung mga dapat nating isaalang-alam sa paggawa ng isang multimedia content? And last one, Relate forms of media to relevant concepts. Okay? So, let us have a short review. Time for review. Okay, now I want you to identify the dimensions most related to the items that I'm going to show you later. So, type nyo lang po yung visual, uh, word na text, audio, visual, motion, or manipulative. Again, ito yung mga dimensions of Multimedia. Ito yung natapos na natin discuss sa mga previous ano natin. Uh, tutorial. Good afternoon, Genesis. Ayan, watching from Kidapawan City Division. Hello po, uh, Jeza Horas. Okay, let us start the review. Okay, Rubik's Cube. Is Rubik's Cube under manipulative, visual, text, audio, or motion? You may participate by typing in the comment section po. Okay, so ang Rubik's Cube ay manipulative. Next is truck. Okay, yung truck, yun yung technique ng pagkuha ng video in which yung camera is you're moving it to the left and to the right. So, this is under motion. Number three. Hip-hop beat. Okay, yung hip-hop beat. Is it a text, audio, visual, motion, or manipulative? Okay. Ayan, si Weir No. Siguro yung sagot mo dito sa number one, yung sa Rubik Cube. Magandang hapon po, Ma'am Nancy, Margas. Okay, the answer is audio. Number four, script. Yeah, the answer is text. Yeah, si Joseph Bulaklak. Number two, motion. Tama ka dyan. Number five, photography. Is it visual, audio, motion, or manipulative? Visual. Okay, let's proceed. 
Number six, FLAC or FLAC, uh, Free Looseless Audio Codec. Okay. It's, tama ka dyan, Joseph? It's audio. Next, number seven. Rule of thirds. Diba? We follow this sa audio and video motion. Number eight. Sun serif. Okay? Tumutuko yan sa font. Diba? Klase ng font. If meron siyang feet or may, walang feet. It's text. Game app. Mga game applications. Ayan. Sis. Magandang hapon, Sarah. Sagot mo ay visual. Game app. Hello po. Magandang hapon, Ani Ang you what? Eight is text. Tama ka dyan. Yan. Tama ka, Ma'am Sarah. Or Sarah, it's manipulative. Number 10, tilt. Again, it's a camera technique. So, saan kaya siya under? It's motion. Number 11, infographics. 11. It's visual. Number 12, modeling clay. Correct ka dyan, Dennis. Manipulative. Number 13, MP3. Diba? Very familiar tayo dyan. Kung nagsasound trip, that is a sound format. Diba? Audio. Yan, magandang hapon din. Lucille, Ma'am Lucille Mokoro. Ayan. Number 14, Century Gothic. It's text. 15, AAC. It's another format for audio. Number 16. Zoom. Tama ka dyan, Joseph. It's motion. Number 17. Rolling shot. Rolling shot. Okay. It's motion. Number 18. Haptics. Okay. Manipulatives. 19. Another format. TTF. It's text format. Correct, Dennis. Next, point of view. Okay, point of view is under visual dimension. Okay, I hope na nalinawan kayo sa iba't ibang klase ng dimensions kasi it's a prerequisite kasi gagawa na tayo ng sarili nating multimedia content. Okay? So, let me check. Okay, nandyan yan sa ating module. Let us have this activity to check if you have a prior knowledge doon sa tatlong stages na dinadaanan sa paggawa ng isang multimedia content. Okay? Ano kaya yun sa tingin nyo na under ng stage 1 or yung first stage, stage 2, tsaka ng stage 3? Okay, let's start with stage 1. You may type in the comment section po. Ano kaya yung mga under sa ating stage 1? Okay. Maganda hapon po, Sir Joe Samson, watching from Dagupan City. Okay, stage 1, under dyan ay ang creative brief, briefing, script writing, we have storyboarding, and sa ating stage 2, andyan yung shooting, a graphics designing, and sound recording. And sa last stage naman, we have the editing and user testing. So we are going to elaborate or discuss it in detail later. And ano nga ba yung tawag sa stage 1, 2, and 3 na yan? Okay? So, but first, let us start with the factors to consider in producing a good content. Okay? So ano nga ba yung mga dapat natin isang alang-alang sa paggawa ng isang maganda at effective na multimedia content? Now, alam nyo ba na meron dalawang klase ng multimedia content? We have the so-called the formal and informal multimedia content. Now, paano masasabi kung ang pinapanood mo or ang ginagawa mo ay under ng formal? Ang formal multimedia content, ang halimbawa niyan ay ang mga newscast, um, mga documentaries, webinars, and so on. While yung informal naman, yun yung tumutukoy sa mga vlogs, di ba? Usong-uso yan sa YouTube. Diba? Lagi tayo nanood ng mga vlogs, video games, texting, TV shows. Yan. Yan yung mga informal. So, doon sa formal at informal, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin 
na mas maganda ang formal kaysa informal or vice versa. They are of equal footing. Bakit? Ano ba yung dapat natin i-consider para masabi na maganda ang ginagawa nating multimedia content or ang ginawa nating multimedia content? The most important thing is that the multimedia content that you have created connects with the audience. So napakalaga ng connection, yung makuha mo yung audience mo, yung magawa mong mag-subscribe siya sa iyo or mapanood yung ginagawa, ginawa mong content. And at the same time, kung yung content mo, uh, it really serves its purpose. Okay? So I have here, I will present to you eight eight factors to consider, okay? Makinig kayo mabuti. Magandang hapon din po, Ma'am Virginia Baldomero from Division of Valenzuela. Sir Mon from, watching from Caloocan. Hello po. Okay, ang una, unang factor po natin ay establish your thesis statement. Okay? So, what particular message do you want to import to your audience? ba? Diba? Sa thesis, di ba, kailangan mo muna identify yung problem. Ano ba, ano kaya yung uh, message na, kila, na gusto mong uh, ibahagi using your multimedia content? Ano ba yung mga social issues na trending, di ba? Ano ba yung current issue and the like? Okay, number two, know your audience. Ito, sobrang importante itong factor. Know your audience. Ano ba yung mga dapat natin isalang-alang sa mga manonood? Una, yung kanilang level of understanding. Hindi natin pwedeng uh, ibigay or i-present yung content na ginawa natin. For example, gumawa ka ng tutorial for a specific um, skill for teenagers. Halimbawa, tinuro mo sila paano gumawa ng origami. Ngayon, ipepresent mo yon sa mga preschoolers paano gumawa ng origami. Pwede mo ba siyang gamitin sa kanila? So, syempre hindi. So, ya-adjust natin yung ating uh, video tutorial na ginawa based doon sa kanilang level of understanding, di ba? And their uh, way of thinking. Paano ba sila mag -isip? Ano ba yung mga bagay na nakaka-catch ng kanilang interest? Okay? Number three, determine your purpose. So, once you have your goal now, ano ba yung uh, purpose mo? Gusto mo ba sila i-entertain? Gusto mo bang i-educate sila? Or do you want to correct uh, wrong uh, perceptions? And the like. Ayan. Gusto mo ba silang ma-touch doon sa iyong content? And so on. Number four. Ayan, magandang hapon po, Ma'am Charissa. Watching from Kidapawan City National High School. Number four, choose your style. Now, kung ang goal mo is to entertain, di ba? Kung ang purpose mo is to entertain, anong style ang gagamitin mo? Anong strategy ang gagamitin mo? Are you going to do storytelling? Are you going to do vlogging? Um, discussion? Uh, discussion? Ayan, sorry. Discussions like webinars. Are you going to create an infographics for that? And so on. Okay? Choose your style. Number five, think of an innovation. Sa panahon natin ngayon, di ba, sobrang dami ng uh, mga YouTube contents. For example, for instance, mga video contents sa YouTube. If you are planning to make a video tutorial of, or a vlog, paano siya magiging kakaiba in a way na uh, papanoorin ka nila, uh, magsusubscribe sila sa iyo, unlike dun sa ibang, may kaparehas mong content, di ba? Think of an Innovation. Think of something new. Diba? For instance, um, isa kang chef and you have decided to make a tutorial on how to uh, make a dish, a specific dish. Diba? Paano mo siya i-innovate, ita-transform into something new. Diba? Number seven, uh, number six, sorry. Decide your language. Diba? Pag formal uh, multimedia content, we can use uh, English language. Diba? Pag informal, we can use the ralo. Kasi in that way, mas madali nila tayong naintindihan. Number seven, explore other options. Okay? Paano mo gustong i- 
i-broadcast or i-share sa public yung content mo. You're going to stay sa Facebook, through YouTube, and, and the like. Diba? Nowadays, hindi lang naman isang uh, platform ang ginagabi ng isang tao. Hindi lang naman isang social media account ang meron sila. So, we can um, broadcast or share our content using the different platforms like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and etc. Number eight. Okay, number eight. Think of what others can give back. Okay, I'm not referring to money here or kung makana yung makukuha mo out of that content. I'm referring to the reactions of the audience. Okay? Hello, I'm Cindy, watching from Mambok, Malolos, Bulacan. So, ano ba yung goal mo at the end of the content after nila mapanood yan or makita or mabasa? Gusto mo bang, uh, ma ano yung feeling na gusto maramdaman ng audience? Feeling in love ba? Matakot? magulat, matouch, and etc. Okay, so para mas madali natin tandaan, we have this actual name, Top Silog. Diba? To remember these eight factors in creating a multimedia content. Okay? So, according to Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality in America and US, meron daw apat na paraan on how to effectively communicate Paano tayo uh, mas epektibo na makapagbibigay, makapag-communicate ng information sa audience? So, meron dito ang apat. Tailoring the message. Communication design for an individual based on information from the individual. Di ba? In short, um, tailoring the message meaning you are personalizing or customizing the mes message based on that person or the specific person's characteristics or skills or interests. Okay, next is targeting the message to audience segments. Okay, communication design for subgroups based on group membership or characteristics such as age, gender, or sex, race, cultural background, language, and other psychographic characteristics such as a person's attitude. So, dito naman, it's more on general. So, kung gagawa ka ng multimedia content, you, ha you have to consider one of the following characteristics kung according to the age ba, gender, sex, race, cultural background, and the like. Okay? Next is using narratives. Communication delivered in the form of a story testimonial or entertainment education. Okay? In short, dito yung uh, you are creating a content, you are making a story. Diba? Use, you're using testimonials diba? para mas madaling maintindihan ng audience yung message mo. This one is very evident sa mga TV commercials, diba? Like, ang um, usual na nakikita ko dito is yung mga uh, brand and toothpaste, diba? They are always presenting testimonials na after nila magamit yung brand na yun is pumuti talaga yung tit nila and they are presenting statistics. Diba? Another example is yung mga sa mga fast food chain. Diba? Gumagawa sila ng storyline inside that specific restaurant para matandaan ng audience yung uh, location tsaka yung uh, meaning ng story na inilabas nila to promote their product. Yeah. Next is framing the message. Communication that conveys the same messages in alternate ways, what is gained or lost by taking an action or making a choice. Now, based on this example, diba, which message, which health messages work? So, experts prefer negative ones, but the public follows positive message. I agree with this, diba, especially sa mga classroom rules. Pag set natin ng classroom rules, mas okay yung positive framing kesa negative framing. Okay, ang example dito is do not eat candy, you'll get fat. Yun yung negative framing. While well, yung positive framing is eat fruit and be slim. So, the, ex uh, the expert suggests to always use positive message kasi yung audience, yun yung usual na uh, pinapalo, unlike the negative ones. Hello po, magandang hapon po. Uh, Mambituin de la Peña from... 
uh, Central School, Kahil South District. Yeah. So let us now proceed with the stages of production in multimedia. Yan yung tinutukoy ko kanina na stage 1, stage 2, and stage 3. Okay, so ngayon pangalala na natin sila. So meron tayo yung tinatawag na pre-production stage or yung stage 1. Production stage and the post-production stage. Pag sinabi natin pre, it's before the production. Production stage is during, while the post-production meaning after. Let's start with pre-production stage. Under the pre-production -produc stage, we have planning meeting. Okay, this kicks off the multimedia production process. So dito, nagkikita-kita or nagsasama-sama yung mga involved sa paggawa ng multimedia content. And dito nagkakaroon na ng tasking, sino yung assigned dito, sino yung cameraman, sino yung magde-direct, sino yung editor, and etc. Next stage under pre-production is the creative brief and script writing. This may be used for any type of project and may serve as a blueprint for all creative content projects needed. Okay? So, yung script writing, ito yung pinakamahalaga sa lahat kasi ito yung pinaka-backbone ng ating multimedia content. So, pag hindi maganda yung script, hindi rin magiging maganda yung uh, production. Next is, last stage under pre-production stage is the storyboarding to tie the elements together. It's a visual representation of a film sequence and breaks down the action into individual panels. It sketches out how a video sequence will unfold. Now, meron ka ng script. Ang next na dapat mong gawin ay ang paggawa ng isang storyboard. Now, ang storyboard ay naka, ano siya, naka-arrange siya by scene. As you can see dito, dito nilalagay lahat ng details saan ba dapat nakaposition yung camera, um, sino yung mga involved, dito yung mga characters involved, ano yung mga design na dapat na makita, and etc. Okay? So, ano ang kalaga ng storyboard? In this manner kasi, uh, nadidivide mo na kung ilang mga video clips or scenes yung dapat na i-shoot. Next is the production stage. Production and designing the visual aspect. So, dito na pumapasok lahat. Uh, staff creating graphics, shoot photo stills or videos, record sound, collect all necessary images, design is always done with an eye towards the audience. So, dito na nangyayari lahat ng audio recording, video recording, pag-design ng background, uh, pag-arte mismo, or yung mismong paggawa ng content. Okay? Ito yung pinakamahabang process sa isang production. Next and a last stage is the post-production stage. So, dito na pumapasok yung tinatawag na review and edit. This is also called the post-production stage and it is the most complex of the multimedia development process. So, bakit siya tinawag na complex? Kasi dito na tayo magdudugtong-dugtong ng iba't ibang media dimensions like video clips, di ba? sound effects, audio, and etc. Kung ano pa yung mga kailangan na makita doon sa final output or final uh, content. And the last one is user testing or also known as the pilot testing. In here, the, te the test members of the audience use the multimedia piece while the team members observe. So, bakit mahalaga ang user testing? Kasi in this manner, nakikita natin kung ano ba yung reactions ng ating target audience. Kung natuwa ba sila or meron silang mga observations doon sa uh, iba broadcast mo pa lang na i-out mo pa lang na multimedia content. So, yung example dyan is sa Sesame Street. Yan po yung nasa module na example. Diba? Bago maglabas sa mga episodes, ayang Deped TV, at or kahit ano man palabas sa TV, nagkakaroon silang tinatawag na user testing para makita yung mga lapses, di ba? yung mga dapat na i-add or dagdag. Then after that, it's ready na. Okay? So clear po ba? Again, so those are the three stages in creating multimedia production. We have pre-production, production stage, and post-production. Now let us have this activity. 
let us work on the first three things to consider in preparing a creative uh, content. Diba kanina present ko is top silog. So let us just use the top, T-A-P, for thesis statement, audience, and purpose. Okay? Magandang hapon po, Ma'am Frem Abido, watching from Kabukbuka National High School. Ayan, look at the poster po. Identify natin yung thesis statement dyan sa poster. Ano ba yung goal? Bakit ginawa yung poster na yan? Or para saan yung poster? What's the main... Who are the main audience of this poster? What do you think is the purpose of this poster? Okay, so let's start with the thesis statement. Kung mapapansin nyo po, mukha siya ng babae and meron siyang parang nakapunch sa eye. Meaning, it symbolizes to, ah, for to stop domestic violence. Diba? Stop domestic violence. And who are the main audience of this poster? The target or audience is the women, for women, especially those who are victims of domestic violence. Yung mga nakakaranas ng pang-aabuso. Diba? Next is, what do you think is the purpose of this poster? Bakit nga ba yan ginawa? Yan, magandang hapon po, Ma'am Florita Mateo, Sir J.D. Babon, watching from CADSEV, SDO, Calbayog City, Samar. Hello po. Yan, para saan kaya itong poster? Okay, the original title of this poster is Open Your Eyes. And its purpose is to urge the victims of domestic violence to do so and combat violence. It urges... Um, Women, yung nakakaranas ng domestic violence to uh, fight for their right. So, yun po yung aim na ating poster. Okay? Let's proceed with poster le poster B. We can do it, di ba? Now, what is the thesis statement? Who are the main audience of this poster? Okay? Let's answer it one by one. Ano kaya yung goal or purpose nitong poster letter B? We women can do it. Diba? Who are the main audience of this poster? It's for women. What is the purpose of this poster that remains relevant up to the present times? Yan, tama si Joseph. Open your eyes daw. Yan. So women empowerment remains a relevant issue. Diba? But this also transcends to mean empowerment to all regardless of gender. It's uh, The implied meaning of this is for gender equality. Not only for women, but all regardless of gender. Okay? So let us now, for your assignment activity, kindly watch this one-minute video. It's a 2014 National Council for Children's Television, NCCT. Sine Pambata Film Festival Awardee for Best Story and Best One Minute Video. Ang title nito ay Robot Ang Tatay Ko. And it, it read its narrative under each frame, then answer the questions that follow. Okay, sa inyong module po sa week 7, ah, naka-screenshots lang po yan, pero today I'm going to show you the actual video. It's a one minute video na meron na siyang story. So, let us watch. Then, sagutan nyo po yung mga tanong later, kahit after po ng ating live sa inyong bahay, para ma-assess nyo po if really understand the movie. Siya ay tatay ko, hindi ordinaryo. Tuwing nagagalit, nagiging robot na macho. Taot sa kanya mga kainuman, pati kapitbahay, pati si nanay, na may superpowers din. Dahil sa lakas sa tatay, di siya umaaray. At ang balat niya, nagbabago ang kulay sa bawat hataw at aray. Sabi niya sa akin, sis na lang. Balang araw, lalabas yung daw ang aking kapangyarihan. Ako, may powers din. Ang galing naman. Isang araw, habang ako nasa bahay, naging robot ulit si tatay. Inakala ang kalaban. Pero bago pang hatawan, tumabas ang tunay kong kapangyarihan. Ah! Super scream na abot kung saan-saan. Dumating ang mga pulis at sinama si tatay. Siya siya dadalhin, tanong ko kay nanay. Aayusin daw nila ang buhay ni tatay. Para sa kanyang pagbalik, hindi na siya robot na matapang. Kung dito ang pagmamahal, ang tanging kapangyarihan. Okay, di ba? Napakaganda ng movie na yan. Kaya siya, ah, short, 
Kaya siya na-award as best story and best one minute video. Robot ang tatay ko. So, you may answer the following question. It's already in your module. Diba? Eight questions. So, identify the thesis statement of the film. Okay. Who are the expected audience? Doon sa film na yon. What is its purpose? What is the style or genre of this content? In what way does the story show innovative ideas, inform, and content? What is the language used? Propose an option for an alternative platform where the content can be viewed. Another style of storytelling. And last question is, what can your audience give back? What do you expect your audience would do after watching this video? If you will just uh, rewatch the video, makikita nyo kung ano yung implied meaning. No? The, yung tatay, actually, hindi siya robot. Meron siyang nire-represent na uh, attitude ng isang tao. Okay? So this will be your assignment. Okay, let us now have proceed with the assessment part. So just type in the answer sa comment section po. Magandang hapon po, Sir Joel. Uh, watching from Calbayo Arts and Design School of Eastern Visayas. Okay, the core of any media content is A, philosophy, B, production plan, C, thesis statement, D, visual storytelling technique. What do you think is the answer? It's letter C, thesis statement. Number two, it refers to the summary of a company's background and goals used in pre-production. Okay, the answer is creative brief, letter B. Number two, it refers to a visual guide used in producing a media content. Okay, so ito yung nakabox box. It's letter, okay, your answer, Ira is C, Joseph is C. Again, it's a visual guide. Okay, pag sinabi yung visual guide, meron siyang pictures, may drawing. Okay, letter B, outline. Okay, the correct answer is, is storyboard, okay? Storyboard, you meron siyang picture sa box, sa box meron picture and meron uh, text sa ilan. Number four, the production stage when editing takes place. Sa anong part nagaganap yung editing and review? Nasa pre-production ba? Sa production? post-production, or sa review. Okay. Letter D. From Florita, letter B. Editing. Meaning, you already have the videos, the raw files, di ba? Then, all you have to do is to connect. Pagko-connect, connect na kayo. So, anong production stage kaya siya? Sir John. Jimenez, letter A daw. Okay, it's under letter C, post-production, nasa review and edit. Okay, so tama din yung sagot mo, Joseph, nasa letter D. And number five, last, this will be the last. It's a step in media production wherein sample audience views and comments on the produced material prior to mass release. Okay, dito na nagaganap yung pagpapanood sa ilang targeted audience para makita mo yung reactions nila or manote mo kung ano yung mga lapses nung ginawa mong multimedia content. Okay? Letter A, critiquing ang sagot ni Sir John. It's letter, tama ka, JD, babon. It's user testing. Okay, so I hope natuto kayo sa ating lesson for today about producing multimedia content. Um, let me end my discussion with this uh, quotation. Creativity is intelligence, having fun. So let us all go out of our box, diba? Move out of the move out of the box and be an inspiration to others. Yeah, according to Albert Einstein. Thank you and see you once again next week. Again, ang ating time slot po ay 4:40 p.m. to 5:20 p.m. every Monday. So I am your tutor cat and magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. See you again next week. God bless.
Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating itulay free online tutorial session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating itulay tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!